Hi everyone, I would like to present you the newest addition to my fleet, which is this E39 1998 BMW 540i single owner with only 18,000 original miles. That's right, 18,000 and as of today, this is the lowest mileage, not only 540i, but, but this is the lowest mileage E39 in the world. I dare you to go online, wherever you are, and find me one that has fewer miles than this. 18,000 original miles. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the car. I'm going to tell you why I bought it. I'm going to give you a bit of a review on it and tell you what's in store for this awesome vehicle. Now the E39 was produced between 1995 and 2004 and to this day it is considered one of the most beautiful BMWs ever made. It's got a very simple yet classic design. It was available with a couple of fantastic engines and it was sort of known for its reliability. Under the hood of this car is a 4.4 liter V8 producing 282 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. But here's a shocker, it is made it to a 5-speed ZF automatic transmission. Yeah, 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 I know, this is not an M car, this is not a manual transmission car, but to me this car is very special. I purchased it from the original owner who picked it up in 1998. The original owner and his wife both work for BMW. They really cared about their car. They drove it only on special occasions. They never drove it in the rain. And it is evident because I climbed under the car and there are no water spots. It looks showroom fresh. And it really, really looks like it was well taken care of. And by the way, this is how I purchased the car. I didn't wash it, I didn't clean it. I didn't do anything to it. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I purchased it without even test driving it. I, I test drove it only after I purchased it and again, it was, it was a fantastic test drive, but I fell in love with the vehicle the second I saw it. Oh, and by the way, this car and this house have been friends since 1998 because the sellers of this car were also the sellers of this house, which I purchased and I worked it into the deal. I would like to point out how clean this car is inside and out. Again, to me, it looks like it just rolled off the showroom floor. The seats are fantastic and they show no signs of wear. The carpets look squeaky, squeaky clean. The steering wheel still has these grooves that new steering wheels have on them. Uh, <laughs> the elbow rest really has no dirt or residue on it. It is a really immaculate condition car. I mean, look at these door cards. They look super, super clean and fresh. Same thing with the back seat. The back seat is absolutely clean. And the owners told me that no one ever sat in these seats. Yeah, I know, I know. A lot of sellers say the same thing, but I believe them. I mean, this is absolutely clean. The backrest is not scratched up from, from kids or legs or anything like that. Look, there's a mat over here. Look how clean this is. The trunk itself looks also very, very clean. Everything looks brand spanking new. There are some original BMW brochures that the sellers left for me. Uh, I mean, I'd like to point out this thing. Look how clean this plastic is. This is usually the, the sort of the wear and tear item that people sort of damage when they open and close the car. Well, not on this car. On this car, this looks brand new. Also, what looks brand new is this toolkit, which, check this out has never ever been used and under the hood this is exactly how i found this car again 4.4 liter v8 not the most powerful but it's very very reliable minus the timing chain guides by the way it rides on these optional 17 inch wheels and the color in case you're wondering is montreal blue the car does have a few imperfections. There's a door ding here. There's a minor scrape on the bumper. There's a small scrape on the fender and a tiny nick on the front quarter panel. The 540i came with a bunch of standard features such as an upgraded cluster, an upgraded cent center stack with this computer, which I'm not going to walk you through just now. It's fairly outdated, but it works very, very well. It had a cassette player. It had these fairly useless cup holders in the middle nice wooden finish and you would think that this is a uh, storage compartment well it's not it's just an elbow rest it doesn't open or close but the car has a lot of intricate details such as the fact that it's got eight airbags this reflective triangle to warn people when you open the door at night memory seats on the door so you can easily access them a coin holder an ashtray which reveals itself from the bottom 
a cigarette lighter that reveals itself as well. A hidden cassette player. The AC vents are in the door. A key with an integrated remote and an immobilizer. A specific gauge that shows you when your service is coming up. A very trendy looking seat belt. A rechargeable flashlight in the glove compartment. A first aid kit located in the passenger footwell. Inside of it you will find the most essential supplies which have been untouched since 1998. That's a dipstick on a BMW. But enough whining, let's take this car for a spin. First thing you notice when you get in is how massive the steering wheel is. But check this out. As you start the car, it automatically adjust to your saved position. You're waiting for the beeps to stop and you turn the key to get it started. Put the seat belts on and my memory seat is one so check this out. Everything adjusts including the headrest. Now this is a five-speed ZF automatic transmission it is not the fastest shifting, but it is known to be very reliable and very smooth. So let's get this thing on the road. Getting out, the first thing you notice is the steering ratio. You have to turn the steering wheel quite a lot to turn the car. I guess it's designed that way to be as smooth as possible to make sure your inputs are not rough or ab abrupt. It's not a sports car by by any means, but it's such a such a cool drive. It feels like you're in the 90s driving the most luxurious car made in that era and it really puts a smile on your face. Yes, it doesn't have a manual transmission, but it gives you a different sensation. So we're going up the hill now, and yes, the car only has 282 horsepower and 310 uh, pounds-feet of torque, but because of the fact that it only weighs 3,800 pounds, it is very, very nimble. It feels super, super nimble. Yes, it is very comfortable, but you never feel like you don't have enough power. These engines are very desirable for a couple of reasons. Yes, it's smoothness, it's power delivery, but also because of the fact that it is to, to many, especially with a manual transmission, a detuned M5. It's an M5 with 25% less power and 80% fewer problems. I'd imagine that people who purchased these vehicles were those who were commuting to the office and who wanted a bit of sophistication, a bit of sportiness, a lot of comfort, and none of the headaches you get with the M5. And these seats, yes, I know they're not the sports seats, but these comfort seats are super comfortable. Now what happens when we do a standing start with traction control off? Oh my God, it's doing a burnout. <laughs> a single wheel burnout, but still, yeah, this car doesn't have a limited slip but it just did a burnout. <laughs> oh boy, this is silly. This is so silly and it's so much fun. <laughs> All right, I just got a bit of a tire squeal. So as soon as you put the traction control off, it becomes a completely different animal. Now it's an animal that can get you in a lot of trouble. With an open diff, you don't get the same traction, especially in the snow. So this is probably not the best snow commuter, but on sunny days like this, I mean, <laughs> this is so awesome. Now I'm not gonna drive this car too much as not to put any unnecessarily miles on it, but you get the idea. It is an awesome, awesome car. It's not an M car, it's not a sports car, but it's a different kind of a vehicle. It, it brings you back to the 90s, early 2000s where the cars not only drove differently, but they smell differently. And, and that's the sensation you get with this car. Yes, I know you get a similar sensation with, with other cars of the same era, but this was the opportunity presented to me and I jumped on it and I'm very, very glad I did. Before we conclude this video, I just wanted to highlight a few interesting things that I found in the glove box, starting with this owner's manual. 
I flipped through this and I realized that this car has a couple of interesting features, such as a convenience start feature. Essentially, with typical vehicles, especially of this area, we actually have to put the key in. You have to put the key in and you have to hold it until it starts. With this one, what you do is you put the key in, you flick it and you can release the key and the car will continue to crank until the engine starts. Pretty cool. Yeah, now we have start buttons, but in 1998, this was pretty revolutionary. This five-speed ZF transmission has what BMW calls adaptive transmission control, which is a software that adapts to your driving style. So if you're someone who drives aggressively, it'll adapt to that style. If you're someone who drives slowly and, and carefully and whatnot, it'll adapt to that style. There's a whole section on tires and wheels, not only what pressure to keep them at, but also explaining what specific numbers on the tires mean. So when you're shopping for tires, you know exactly what to look for when choosing the best tires for this vehicle. And then at the end, there's a whole section on caring for your car. There's a section on washing, on vacuuming, on, on how to clean the exterior, how to clean the interior. I don't know if newer cars have this, but I've never seen anything like this. I mean, it goes into detail on exactly how to properly care for your ultimate driving machine. And the last thing is, the sellers of this vehicle kept every record of maintenance uh, done to this car. They also have the original sales receipt with the original purchase price, uh, some of the BMW installed accessories. It has the garage opener, it has the CD changer installed in the trunk, and it is really a, a collection of, of, of documents that every owner who cares about a car really really appreciate and i and i really really do and uh sort of this the last last thing since the sellers of this car work for bmw they also left me with a lot of bmw memorabilia so i have bmw watches bmw keychains uh some posters autographed posters uh, by bmw racers so I feel very, very fortunate that this car not only comes with what you see here, but also comes with a, a, a lot of interesting memorabilia, which, which sort of add to the value and, and, and how special this car really is. So that's it. This was a tour of my 540i. At this point, I've got to say, I'm very glad I purchased it. Yes, it came as a package deal with this house, but yes, I paid for the car and I and I really, really appreciate it. But I'm also torn with what to do with it. Do I, do I keep it in the garage and let it sit and hopefully appreciate? I mean, this is the lowest mileage E39 in the world. Do I drive it? But the more I drive it, the more value it will lose. Or do I drive it and do I modify? Do I put uh, the OEM M Sport or conversion kit on it with the you know with the bumper side skirt rear bumper the exhaust yeah the interior pieces would have to be upgraded but at the end of the day it would still be an automatic transmission car or do i put it on bring a trailer i don't know let me know what you think i should do with this vehicle by commenting down below and thank you very much for watching i i hope you like my uh, my purchase and i will see you in the next video Bye bye